In this video, we're going to talk about Cauchy's Mean Value Theorem. Now, Cauchy's Mean Value Theorem is named after Augustin Louis Cauchy. And uh, after the invention or discovery of calculus, there was nearly a century of rapid development of its application to a wide variety of problems. So this was done by Newton, uh, who applied a lot of this, his results to uh, a lot of his, his big results in physics. Of course, Leibniz did the same sort of thing. Their students, particularly some of the students of Leibniz, such as the Bernoulli, several members of the Bernoulli family, uh, Euler and Lagrange, worked through lots and lots of uh, very important and uh, very exciting applications of calculus, sometimes the things that get their way into a standard calculus course these days, but they were cutting edge mathematics at the time. In particular, I want to kind of single out Euler, E-U-L-E-R, that's pronounced Euler, who uh, produced probably more mathematical research than anyone in history. If you go by just volume of, of number of pages of mathematical things that he's published and number of papers, uh, there's nobody else that really even kind of comes really that close to him. Um, he also did a lot of interesting things such as uh, standardize a lot of the notation that we use today. So things like i for the square root of negative 1 and pi for the circumference of a circle divided by its diameter and e for the base of an exponential uh, function, the natural base, and so forth. Some of these notations uh, became very popular and standardized with Euler and some of our modern function notation and so forth. So uh, he was important for those things is in mathematics started to look more like it does today, calculus did in particular, and then also of course then um, he, he actually helped develop a lot of the applications as well and lots of other stuff. All, he did a lot of things. But uh, that was sort of in the 18th century, and by the time the 19th century came around, the focus of research into calculus became uh, uh, more on shoring up its theoretical basis and writing some rigorous proofs of some of the foundational ideas. And Cauchy was, was really uh, at the forefront of this, uh, this wave of, of research. And, uh, for example, he, he worked with some of the early ideas of using delta epsilon for proofs, and this was later on. Uh, shored up by some other folks like uh, Weyer Strauss, for example. And uh, he also published lots and lots of papers, uh, probably the second only to Euler in terms of the number of papers he, he uh, published. Now, specifically Cauchy's mean value theorem, what we're concerned with is the ratio of the derivatives of two different functions, like this f prime of c over g prime of c. And uh, we're going to get that that's equal to a ratio of basically delta y's here, f of b minus a, f of a over g of b minus g of a. Now, just as the uh, mean value theorem was a an extension of the um, Rolle's theorem, Cauchy's mean value theorem is a further extension or a further generalization of the mean value theorem. And to see that, let's take a look here. If you let the function g of x be the function g of x equals x, then, of course, g prime of x is 1 for any x, so g of prime of c is 1. So this denominator right here becomes 1 on the left, so the left side becomes f prime of c. Then the right side, g of b is b and g of a is a, so this becomes f of b minus f of a over b minus a, which is exactly the conclusion of the regular mean value theorem. And notice that the conditions here in the hypothesis are exactly the same that f and g are continuous on a, the closed interval a, b, and differentiable on the open interval a, b, we do want to make sure we're not dividing by zero, so we'll make sure that the g prime of x is not equal to zero for x and a, b in the interval a, b, and it says then there exists a c in the interval such that this is true. Now the proof of the mean value theorem is really exactly like the, the proof of Cauchy's mean value theorem is really just like the proof of the mean value theorem, but we change the function a little bit up here in the mean value uh, theorem, we, we let the function uh, s of x, uh, d, of, d be this difference in f of x minus s of x. It was this function right here. Okay, well, we're going to replace that with a, a slight variation on that here. And so we're going to get this function h of x. It's going to be f of x minus f of a minus the thing that we're looking for, f of b minus f of a over g of b minus g of a. And then that's time of g of x minus g of a. So let's look at that function. And we're going to apply Rolle's theorem to that. So first we ought to make sure that Rolle's theorem still works. Well, let's look at this function. Um, this is g of x is a continuous function. If you subtract a, a constant from that, you still get a continuous function. 
If you multiply that by a constant, you still get a continuous function. If you add another constant right here to that, you get a continuous function. And if you add that to another continuous function, then guess what? You get a continuous function. So if f, since f and g are continuous on a, the closed interval a, b, so is h. And all the things I just said are also true for differentiable functions. You take a differentiable function g of x, subtract a constant, you still get another differentiable function. And you multiply that by constant, you still get another differentiable function. And you add a constant, it's still differentiable. And you add another differentiable function to that, the resulting function h is still differentiable where the original ones were on that interval a to b. So next we want to look at uh, the endpoints, h of a and h of b. So if we take this function here, yeah, you can see it all in one, one thing here. Take this function here, put x equals a here and here. Uh, that gives us right here an a and an a here. Well, f of a minus f of a is 0. g of a minus g of a is 0 times this thing is still 0. So the whole thing is just 0, just like it was in the regular mean value theorem. And down here we let uh, x be b, b, b. So here you have f of b and g of b there. Uh, g of b minus g of a is the same as the denominator here, so those cancel, and we distribute this minus, so we got f of b minus f of a, then you got minus f of b plus f of a, but then everything cancels out here, and you get zero as well. So you satisfied all three conditions of Rolle's theorem. So Rolle's theorem, the conclusion must be also true. It says there exists some c in that interval a to b where h prime of c equals zero. So now we need to just take the derivative of h. So there's the original function h. Take the derivative. First, apply the sum rule. We take the derivative of the first part as f prime. The derivative of this part, f of a, is 0, so that goes away. Then we have this constant, constant multiple rule. We still got that, times the derivative of what's in this parentheses. Well, the g of a derivative is 0, and the derivative of g of x, of course, is g prime of x. Now, h, uh, there is some c where that derivative is 0, so we let c in place of x and then put 0 in place of h prime. So 0 goes here with the c in place of x here and here. And now we just solve for what we're looking for. So add the opposite of this term to both sides and I switch sides also. So we get f prime of c equals, uh, that minus becomes now plus, f of b minus f of a over g of b minus g of a times g prime of c and divide both sides by g prime of c and we get the result that we want. For a couple of final notes on this, this section here, notice that Rolle's theorem and the mean value theorem and Cauchy's mean value theorem are all what we call existence theorems. They guarantee the existence of a C uh, such as whatever the condition is, like this condition here, is satisfied provided all your uh, properties in the hypothesis are satisfied. But it doesn't explicitly show us how to find that uh, value of C. We have to get our hands dirty with some finding derivatives and solving equations and so forth to do that. Uh, these three theorems are very important in the theoretical foundation of calculus and they're used to actually prove many other results. Uh, where I'm going to use them pretty quickly is we're going to use Cauchy's mean value theorem. It's going to be a key step in proving L'Hopital's rule, which we're going to cover in the next section. And that's actually a very practical, very useful uh, theorem that we're going to do a lot of, uh, you know, kind of homework computational problems using that. L'Hopital's rule uh, is used to help us find some limits. So we'll pick that up in the next video.